Our next, next speaker for the day is Mr. Ivan Lutra. He is a leading blockchain expert of 2020 by USA Today. He has been building and investing in fast-growing technology products since he was 13. Building 30 plus apps and selling his first company at 17. Most recently, he was honored as a Forbes 30 under 30 recipient. He has been in crypto since 2014 and in 2017 used to run a crypto investment bank where they took projects like Hashgraph from 10 million to the current 10 billion market cap. He is an equity investor in Hashgraph, Ripple, and over 400 plus token projects. In 2021, he invested in 250 plus private sales and advised 20 plus projects per listing. He also has a NFT portfolio, including six board apes, six clone X, X copy, and many more blue chips. Business Insider recently selected him as a NFT expert to follow on Twitter. His session topic today is Metaverse, NFTs, and the New World Order. Lutra, sir. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, you're audible. Hi, perfect. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, hopefully, people listening to this can get some value out of this. And thank you for your time. Uh, thanks for the introduction already, Mr. Alok. Uh, just to walk you through, guys, about give you a quick background about myself. My name is Evan Lutra. I got involved in the technology space since pretty early on. I was one of the first few hundred people to develop apps for the iPhone. I built the first app for ICD Cricket World Cup 2011, built the first app for Delhi Metro, built the first app for Dubai Metro, had millions of downloads. And this was when I was just started about 13 years age. I built about 30 apps and sold my first company at the age of 17. And that's when I started realizing that technology is really the future. Uh, I started to invest back into technology as technology is what I understood best. And this is what has led me to today where I am. I came across Bitcoin for the first time in 2014. This was when I was living in San Francisco. I'd moved out of India around that time. And I just started investing and dabbling with cryptocurrencies. But I didn't really get involved deeply into the space until 2017 when I started investing a lot more into crypto companies. Like Mr. Alok said, I was an early equity investor in some of the top crypto companies of today, including Hedera, Ripple Labs, and many more token investments. Over the last few years, uh, I've been uh, very active in the blockchain and crypto space, trying to push the movement forward and educate as many people as possible about the future that is to come. I spoke at over 200 live events in person in over 25 countries, pushing the movement of blockchain and cryptocurrencies forward. I write articles for all the top tier media, Cointelegraph, Forbes, Entrepreneur, Hacker Noon, and many more, where I talk about metaverses and play to and gaming even before the trends take off. In, in the last two, three years, uh, I've made over 400 private sale investments. Majority of my investments have been around metaverses and around play to earn gaming. Having invested in over 100 NFT projects uh, and advising over 15 NFT projects, which helped take to market, delivering insane returns, 50 to 100x, 5,000 to or 10,000 percent return, quarter investors with hundreds of millions of dollars in daily volume on day one. During this experience, I've come to realize a lot of things on how our world is changing and the new and what I think the new world order that we will live in the future will be very different than the world we live in right now. I'm pretty sure most of you already heard about Facebook changing its name to Meta. Uh, they own what Facebook already owns WhatsApp. They also own Instagram, arguably two of the most used apps on the planet. Right. Facebook works around the attention economy. Facebook makes money by getting your attention. Why would the largest social media company in the world change its name to Meta? Because that's where our attention will be in the future. Most people think the metaverse is a virtual world, like the movie Ready Player One or something like a virtual game. But I think they're wrong. It's not a place. It's a time. 
a moment in time you know in artificial intelligence they have the idea of singularity it's a moment in time when ai becomes smarter than humans the moment when artificial intelligence is stronger than human intelligence similarly the metaverse is a moment in time when our digital life is worth more to us than our physical life and this is not an overnight change it's a gradual change that's been happening for over 20 years every important part of our life is going digital work from factories to laptops from boardrooms to zoom calls friends from neighbors to followers where do you find like-minded people you find them on twitter you find them on reddit you find them on tinder games more people play fortnite than basketball and football combined i'll touch about this a little bit later in my talk identity filters are the new makeup stories are your personal billboard to broadcast to the world who you are what matters more to you how you look like in real life or what you look like on instagram everything goes digital your friends your job your identity and now with crypto your assets are also online bored apes are the new rolexes fortnite skins are the new skinny jeans if everyone hangs out online all the time your flexes need to be digital also so if you play this forward another 5 10 20 years we will cross into the metaverse the moment in time when our digital life matters more to us than our physical life let's let's think about this from a different angle our attention used to be 100% on the physical environment we always what's happening around us then came tvs that dropped, that took 20% of our attention 20% of tvs 80% of the physical world then came computers that dropped down our attention on the physical world to 60% then came phones now everybody is on their phones half the time you go to a restaurant half the time people are on the phone and only half the time they focus on eating our attention is being sucked from the physical to the digital and where our attention go that's where energy flows if 50% of our attention is on the digital screen then 50% of our energy will go to the digital life and soon apple has already made this a public there there's going to be companies that are going to design glasses going to be a screen in front of your eye all the time that will take our attention from 50% on screens to 90% where you will always be having a screen in front of you in the real world i was building apps for the google glass over 10 years ago right this was it was too early for its time it was way too early but i already had a screen in front of my eyes 90% of the day 10 years ago but now with somebody like apple coming out with something like this it's going to be everybody having that and that's the moment in time when the metaverse starts because at that moment our virtual life will become more important to us than our real life now is this a good thing or a bad thing like anything it's neither good it's not bad it's just to think a very different thing than the one we are used to living today nobody will call it the metaverse in a few years that's like in 1997 people call it the internet information superhighway or cyberspace it's just going to become a normal part of a life for many individuals around the world if you ask me personally i would not spend too much of my time in the metaverse reason being i like to enjoy my real life and i'm blessed and fortunate to be able to do that and i understand that that it's it's not everybody who can get to enjoy the real life and that's where uh the metaverse beauty comes out i i i'm i i mean, most people i heard from india right i mean there's 600 million people in india who got access to the internet for the first time in 2017 now this is almost as many people in europe and double the people in all of us so these 600 million people they mostly come from tier 2 tier 3 cities and villages where they don't make more than a few hundred dollars a month and with an income like that they cannot go out and enjoy the real world because it costs a lot of money but what they can do is they can plug into the metaverse at any time and get access to opportunities which were not available before why do you think tiktok grew the fastest in india because everybody in this in their in their free time was sitting on a screen and scrolling up and down all the time a, an interesting segment inside this is play to earn games what do you think happens to kids who are born these days and by the age of 5 they're playing games in the metaverse and earning nfts that they can trade for real money in the market this is already happening at a very very large scale in developing economies around the world if you know uh, about the game axie infinity there is hundreds of thousands of people in philippines playing axie infinity every day to earn in game assets that they can then sell to more fortunate people in countries like the us and london and many other U- uh, european countries and this and everybody from 5 year old kid to 50 year old grandma they are all playing this game to because the game the, the skins that the assets they earn in the game 
is more valuable to them than what they would make if they're working all day. But the, the, the 10, 20 dollars a day that uh, the guy in America pays to buy that asset is not a lot for him. He would love to pay that so that he can he can exit the game faster. So if you understand that, you understand where the world is going. And this is just the beginning. We will see the next wave of tokenization that will enable systems to be built around learn to earn, play to earn, move to earn, you know. And this, these are all different ways that how crypto can be made. I'm here today to open you to the idea of the world is moving towards a world full of tokens and systems that align incentives between different stakeholders. And to make you understand this, let me give you an idea. Right now, let's say if you ask here, what's the best car to buy? Most of you will probably say buy a Rolls Royce, you know, buy a Lamborghini, buy a Ferrari. But let's say tomorrow Toyota and Maruti come out with a token. And somebody buys Toyota token and somebody buys, I buy Maruti tokens and let Mr. Alok buys Toyota tokens. And then uh, the, when somebody asks him what's the best car to buy, I will say buy a Maruti, he will say buy a Toyota. Because now he's a part owner in the business. Every time a Toyota is sold, he makes a small cut. Every time a Maruti is sold, I make a small cut. And the, so you align the user and the owner right now as one, one entity. And you can scale this out when you bring the manager. You have to remember, in a business, there are three stakeholders involved. is the user of the business, is the owner of the business, and the manager of the business. All three people want different things. The user wants the best product for the cheapest price. The manager wants to keep everybody happy, and the owner just wants to make a lot of money. But with the tokenization, you have a way to make the user a part owner and a part manager. Now, let's say Toyota makes, uh, I don't know, $10 billion a year. And then ask Mr. Alok, what should we invest this in? Using his tokens, he can vote. Maybe he likes to fly a lot, say invest in a plane. I like to go on the water, so I invest in a yacht. So I'm now also a part manager of the business. So when you align incentives, that's when you see a maximum scale in a business. And that's what you're going to see happening in the, crypt, in, the, in, the, in the new world order, where there will be tokens around for everything that happens. The new world order that I envision will be full of token models controlled by DAOs. If you're here today, you have the opportunity to get involved in this space. You have the opportunity to be one of the early, early people to lead the change and decide how this change happens and how this change progresses. And that's the most exciting part about this for me personally. Um, I think the last speaker here, uh, he mentioned about AI. I didn't plan to touch upon AI in this chat, in this talk, but I'm happy to mention like, after blockchain, the most disruptive technology I've ever seen in my, and I, I, I get paid to be early in technology. You know, that's what I do. I use technology all the time, I invest in foreign technology companies. The idea is to be able early. AI is probably one of the most impactful technologies ever. And in technology, you have to also understand one thing. Like most industries and most businesses, they grow linearly. They grow 20, 30% a year, and that's how they grow a graph, like a linear graph, right? Technology grows like a J curve. It does not, it, there's, it's, it's like a J curve, it's growing slowly, so there's no progress. But once it finds the product market fit, it shoots like a rocket and it goes up. And that's what is happening with AI right now. This is a technology that's been in development for all, almost a decade. But we are seeing massive growth happening at a very, very fast scale because now AI is able to teach itself. And that's why ChatGPT has, is the fastest growing technology product in history. There are a million users in the first five days. And it is truly mind blowing to what you can do with it. And if you have not today tried ChatGPT, I highly recommend you, you find some time and you go and try it because it will blow your mind to what, what level of possibilities are there. And it has passed all sorts of exams it can do legal work, it can do finance work, it can do what most university students can do anyways. So this is what I would recommend. I would recommend looking at the technology, understand where the new world order goes, and that's how you can help, and that's how you can help your communities, and that's how you can also scale. I'm here today, if you need any help, you can always reach out, I'm happy to support, and I'm looking for new opportunities to invest in all the time. I'm available on Instagram at Evan Luthra, and email evan at evanluthra.com. Thank you guys, any questions?